Greetings and hallucinations. My name is Reese Tucker. Welcome to my humble abode and gaming setup. I've been gaming for many years. I got my start with consoles like the GameCube, the Wii, and the Xbox 360. However, as time went on, I realized that I could do so much more with a PC. I really liked the idea of having a fully in-depth, customizable experience. And so, I built my first PC about four years ago, and she still runs like a champ. I've given her some upgrades over the years, but she's always been very safely within the mid-range PC bracket. With this computer, I've played hundreds of different games of every category, from MMORPGs to 2D platformers. Today, I'm going to show you my top 10 favorite games on PC. Starting at number 10, we have the game Terraria. Now, a lot of people will compare the game Terraria to Minecraft. It's fairly similar because in both you're mining for resources, you're fighting monsters that come out at night, and you're essentially, there's no set goal, but you're building the world that you live in. However, I would argue that Terraria is a much more interesting and colorful game overall. I love the graphics. Even though it's fairly minimal, very pixely, I love it. It's just a beautiful game that really takes advantage of the medium it's using. A 2D platforming, side-scrolling adventure game. They do a really good job of pulling you in to the game itself. There are so many colors. You can go from one biome to another, and it's this interesting shift. And it really makes you want to explore the rest of the game. It easily motivates me to continue playing it and to continue crafting more items, finding more resources, just progressing through the game. Coming in at number nine is the game One Finger Death Punch. Now, One Finger Death Punch is a game I originally found on the Xbox Live Arcade. So it was an indie game and I could buy it for like a dollar and I played it with a gamepad. And honestly, I still play it with a gamepad. I'm sort of a purist when it comes to that game. I have to play it with the gamepad because it's just the original experience I had. Also, when you're using a mouse, it's not one finger death punch, it's two finger death punch. That is all that you use to control the game. It is entirely made out of pressing the X and the B button. However, there is no game that better does it. Like, I don't know any game that utilizes only one finger. Honestly, it's such an interesting concept, and they do it so well. They make you feel like a really awesome... You feel like Chuck Norris, essentially. You're kicking so much butt, it's crazy. There are, <laughs> there are stick figures coming at you from both sides, and you're kung-fuing the crap out of them. It's great. I have a hard time containing myself when I play the game. Even when I'm not playing the game, I have to gush about it. Coming in at number 8, we have Overwatch. Now, Overwatch is this really interesting first-person shooter where you're able to play as multiple different heroes. Now, these heroes have individual abilities that make them unique. There's a lot of interesting team dynamics that go with that as well because when you're choosing a character, you choose your character to complement the rest of your team. It's really interesting how people really come together in Overwatch and that's something that I really enjoy about the game itself, that I don't really get with too many other games. Such an interesting team dynamic. However, it's sort of a love-hate relationship that I have with Overwatch, because sometimes I'm playing it just for fun, and then sometimes I actually want to win, <laughs> contrary to popular belief. Sometimes I want to win, sometimes I want to enjoy the victories that can come with playing the game. However, overall, Overwatch is kind of a meme now. So, not only can you play the base game modes, like the Team Deathmatch, or the Free For All, or something like that, you can play custom games that people set up themselves, usually just for fun. Now these games can be anything from playing Freeze Tag, to play Hide and Seek. There's so many different things you can do with the custom game mode, which I really enjoy, and honestly for 
a long period of time, I just stopped playing the regular game modes and played custom games with other people just to enjoy their interesting attitudes and just joke about the game in general. Coming in at number seven, we have the game Subnautica. Wow, what a beautiful game. Such an expansive map and so much content to explore. Now, I really enjoy it, but there are some things about it that make it difficult for me to play, and that's because you're playing it on an alien planet in the ocean. And in the ocean, there are so many unknown creatures and things that can hurt you. You have to be very careful when you're playing the game. Also, the sound design, for example, really pulls you in and it builds this atmosphere, which also makes it very kind of scary at moments because you feel so isolated under all that water and you're just trying to collect some ores or minerals or whatever. You're just trying to collect resources. I love Subnautica because on top of its immersive elements. It's just so beautiful. As you can see, it has such interesting color. It's just so interesting and I love it. I love the imagination that went into this game. Ironically and unintentionally, coming in at number six is Resident Evil 6. Now I know I'm gonna get some flack for having this unpopular opinion, but I actually enjoyed Resident Evil 6. To be perfectly honest, I really enjoyed the storyline. It wasn't too terribly interesting, but it also wasn't lacking in any particular way. The graphics were great for the time, and honestly, they still are pretty good. Now, I know Resident Evil is not gonna be for everyone. I will be the first to admit that I've had a couple times, just, just a couple, where I was spooked by one or two of the zombies. However, that's part of the fun, because when you're able to play it with a friend, and you get spooked, you gotta scream your head off, and they get to laugh at you, and it's fun for everyone. That's what I love about the game. Number five on this list is the game Stick Fight. It's a game you should play with your friends because it goes from friendly rivalry to absolute hatred in absolutely no time, and it's just hilarious. I actually can't play it because I get too loud. I'm always screaming and yelling and freaking out because my uh, <laughs> friends are killing me or I'm killing them and I'm very happy about it. <laughs> it just works out so well for me. I uh, really enjoy Stick Fight because it has a very minimal art style, but it's such a fun game to play. You can't help but get stuck playing it for hours and hours and not even realize it because you're just one-upping your friends over and over and over again. It's just so crazy, it's so off the wall. Number four is the game Payday 2. Now, Payday 2 is a game that I really, really enjoy. Now, some of you may think, a heist game? That doesn't sound very morally acceptable. You may be right, mm, but I really like it anyway. I'm unashamed of the fact that I love Payday 2. And like I say all the time, play it with a friend. That's pretty much my opinion on most games, and in this game, it's so true. It's so true. You really rely on your allies to cover you, especially when there are those waves of SWAT and policemen just coming down on you. It's honestly just a really fun multiplayer experience. Up next is the game Grand Theft Auto V. Now, Grand Theft Auto V is a game that I really love. It is such an interesting game, such a fun game, such an expansive map, so many missions, so many things to do, there's not enough time to do it all in. And then you add the multiplayer aspect, and you're doing it all with a bunch of people. It's honestly the craziest game you can play, or one of the craziest games you can play. We'll get to that at number one. Something I really love about the game is the car chases. Car chases all over the place. You're always running away from cops or you're running away from other players who just decide that they hate you. It's really interesting, really fun. It's this whole race against time feeling. I really enjoy that about a game, especially Grand Theft Auto. It's a beautiful map with great graphics and it's just so enjoyable to even just admire the map. Honestly, I spend time just admiring the map and all the detail that went into that game. Thumbs up to Rockstar Games. 
Now for number two on this list, it's a game called Roblox. Now Roblox, I've been playing since 2011. I've had my account for over seven years. Anybody can make their own game within Roblox. And so you can literally build your own game in Roblox and produce it on their website and people can play it. It's targeted at a general child's audience. However, there's a lot to be said for what a creator can do with Roblox. I've actually tinkered with building games myself, and the interface is just so easy to use. It's so intuitive that honestly, I would recommend anyone just pick it up because you don't have to be a programmer to be able to create a game in Roblox. And you can create literally anything. The sky is the limit. And that is something that inspired me so much. Roblox has inspired me in so many different ways because not only are you going to see fun little mini games that you might see in like games like Gmod or something like that, you see art pieces. People literally make art and they put it on Roblox. Some of these kids get jobs after they play Roblox because they show their prowess as a developer and they can use all of their games as a portfolio. And I think it's such an amazing experience to be able to experience all of these independent developers' games. And they're just kids. I was a kid and I was playing these games. It was such an awesome experience and I would not have had it any other way. I would not trade that time for anything in the world. And now for number one, the crazy game you've all been waiting for. Killing Floor 2. That's a really intense game. <laughs> it is, in essence, a first person zombie apocalypse zombie shooter game. Now that's just it at its base level. When you go deeper, when you actually play the game, you'll be greeted with some really insane gameplay. And when I say insane, that is an understatement. Like I said for the past few games, there is a very large freakout factor. There's a large freakout factor. Because you are constantly running away from zombie hordes who are trying to eat you, and you're blowing them into literal tiny pieces. And it is so hilarious in some ways, and yet so redonkulous in other ways, that you can't help but just sit back and be like, wow, those graphics though. Honestly, I love this game. It's easily my first go-to game. If I have any time and I have friends online, I will immediately go to Killing Floor 2 because the graphics are just so good and the experience is just so hilarious that it would be ridiculous to not choose that game when you have just a little bit of time to kill on Killing Floor. I have had such an interesting experience with just the base game and then all of the user-created content. I really enjoy the fact that they encourage people to make their own maps and have their own fun with the game because it just brings more people in. More people are playing the game and it's honestly an experience that everyone should try. I mean, as long as you have a stomach for the zombie shooter games, obviously. But you know what? Honestly, it is one of the most fun games to play with your friends. There are so many things to be said about Killing Floor 2 and honestly is easily my favorite game to play on PC. This has been my top 10 favorite games on PC. I hope you all enjoyed and hopefully you guys will go give some of those games a try. And honestly, I would just give PC gaming a try. If you're a console gamer, think about investing in building your own PC and then build your own top 10 list. Find some games that you truly enjoy. I'm Reese Tucker and I'll see you guys next time.